Today is Friday, and on Fridays, we have you ask me anything. So click on that little box down there in the corner. It'll take you straight to IGTV for today's episode. JimmyRants.com is the website, and as always, you can engage live in the content. Go follow me, though. I'm over on Instagram. You got to go follow me there at Livin' Low Carb Man, L I V I N L O W C A R B M A N. Once you're there, you can engage live. We are here Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, so thank you so much for being here today. We also simulcast live over here on my Facebook channel. Thank you guys for being here today as well. And then finally, over on YouTube. What up, YouTube? Thank you all for being here today on Jimmy Rants. If you missed the live, you can watch it on replay right here on Instagram. Uh, just go on over to IGTV. Uh, right as soon as this is over, it will go right up there. So if you're watching this on the replay, hello. Thank you for being here. I see you. I see all you people that watch the replay. Thank you so much for your dedication to this show. I also put it up over on YouTube on replay. Just type in a keyword, Jimmy Rants. You will find the show. Finally, pop on over to the official website for this show. It is JimmyRants.com. And while you're there, you can see all the past episodes and it is also your opportunity to support my work. You can do a one-time donation through the PayPal or a monthly donation through the Patreon link. And if you're a Patreon, I haven't said this in a little while, but if you're a Patreon fan, you actually get early access to the next week's podcast. So next week, I've got two uh, incredible guests uh, Jessica Viker is a registered nurse. She airs on the Living La Vida Low Carb Show on Wednesday. Uh, and then I've got a registered dietitian representing uh, NutriSense named Kara Collier. Uh, so they're the ones that have the little, the little NutriSense. Yeah, this company here. And so I talked to Kara about CGM technology. So if you want to access those now... Uh, you can go do that if you're one of my Patreons and really a monthly donation amount of any amount will give you that access. So all those links, you guys, JimmyRants.com. Okay, good Friday to you. I hope you guys have had a wonderful week. Uh, it's just been a typical week for Jimmy. I just do my work, head down, go all week long, go, 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 go. Excited to get to this point in my week because by the time I'm done with Ask Me Anything on my Jimmy Rants episode on Friday, I kind of breathe a little bit and I breathe until around Sunday night when I start preparing for starting all the work all over again for the next week. So I love this show, uh, this particular episode each week. So get me your questions. This is literally Ask Me Anything. This is your opportunity to ask, ask, and ask some more whatever questions you have for me. So you guys know I know a lot about keto and cholesterol and fasting, but I'll talk about anything. I could talk about some of the childhood trauma stuff. I could talk about literally any of the topics I brought up on Jimmy Rants. Um, that's always open game as well. And really anything you wanna know about me um, or ask of me or get my opinion of me, this is your opportunity. Um, literally people all week long, what do you think about, I'm like, Com come on Friday. Like I need people to ask questions on Fridays. So today's your day, your time to shine. Let's make it happen. So before we get to your questions, I did have a few come in ahead of time, but even before we get to those, I always have a few headlines that I want to go over. And the first one's not a headline. It's actually a study. And it was a study conducted and uh, promoted on the CDC website. So it's from the Department of Health and Human Services and the Centers for Disease Control. Uh, the study is called Community and Close Contact Exposures Associated with COVID-19 Among Symptomatic Adults uh, 18 Years and Older in 11 Outpatient Healthcare Facilities in July of 2020. So what they did, you guys, is they, they looked at hospital records of people in 11 different hospitals who were diagnosed with COVID-19. And there was one chart in here that I thought was pretty darn remarkable. And I wanted you guys to see this. So the total number of subjects in the study was 314. Remember across 11 different uh, hospitals, they had 314 patients. 
Um, and so the interesting one to me was when we got down to whether they uh, bu, 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 wore a mask, you know, what the frequency was that they wore a mask. So reported use of cloth uh, face covering or mask 14 days before the onset of the illness. So in other words, they got symptomatic and they became diagnosed with COVID-19. Now you would think with the hysteria they have about us wearing these masks that the people who never wore a mask would be the highest percentage and the people who wore the mask the most often would have the lowest percentage. You would, you would like deductive reasoning would tell you that would be true. So with the reported use of cloth uh, face mask covering for 14 days before illness, never wear a mask was just 3.9% of the study participants. Rarely, which means they do it on occasion, 3.9% as well. Sometimes wear a mask, 7.2%, often, which means not every single time, but enough to say most of the time, 14.4%. And the people who always wore a mask, listen to this, guys, the people who always, always wore a mask in the two weeks prior to becoming symptomatic and being hospitalized and being diagnosed with COVID-19, 70.6%. If that doesn't shock you, I don't know what will. And if you combine the always and the often, that is a total of 85% of the people diagnosed with COVID-19 and symptomatic, 85% of them wore it either often, which was most of the time, or always. So tell me again, why are we wearing masks? Why? I mean, I know it makes people feel like they're doing something. And in this day and age, doing something they feel is better than nothing. But when 85% of the people are wearing it most of the time or always, and yet they still got COVID-19, why are we pushing the mask? It's obvious the masks aren't doing what they're supposed to do. If the purpose of the masks is prevention, preventing COVID-19 from happening. Now, obviously, each case uh, is different because viral load matters and maybe they would have got an even heavier viral load. But wouldn't you think in that category of never wear a mask, 3.9%. Wouldn't you think those would be the people that would be the 71%? You would think that. So why isn't this making news? Why isn't this out there on all the major mainstream media stations? Well, we know why. They want us to keep being muzzled and keep wearing a mask. And I'm getting this close, you guys, to canceling my membership at Costco and Sam's if they're gonna require me to wear a mask to go in their store. I'm this close to just going and saying, okay, you're going to feel that in your pocketbook. And I'm going to I'm going to cancel my membership. I almost did it a couple weeks ago at Costco when they wouldn't let me in without a mask. And the manager pleaded, "Please don't. We're having so many people so many people drop out." I'm like, "Yeah, that's there's there's consequences to having these kind of things put into place." when we now have studies from the CDC, every time they fact check people, and I'm so sick of the censorship on social media, every time they fact check, they always say, well, you need to, you need to refer to the CDC.gov, you need to refer to who. And I'm like, okay, this is on the CDC.gov website. This study was their study. And even they show 85% of the people who wore a mask still got COVID-19 crazy. It's crazy. Let me move on to the next one because it's a little bit of a happier story than that one. Although that was good news, they're not going to do anything with it. Vitamin C cuts COVID deaths by two thirds. Now we've gone over how vitamin D has very strong evidence in as a prophylactic for 
COVID-19, in other words, preventing it uh, from hitting you. I'm still doing very high dose vitamin D myself, but now vitamin C, we also have done this uh, on the Live and La Vida Low Carb Show this week on Tuesday, the Jimmy Rants bonus episode Tuesday, this past Tuesday, uh, was about the virtues of vitamin C and D in boosting your immunity, immunity for COVID-19. All right. So the world's first randomized placebo-controlled trial designed to test high-dose intravenous, so that's where they squirt it into your veins. Vitamin C for the treatment of COVID-19 has reduced mortality in the most critically ill patients by two-thirds. So this is actually out of China, out of the Wuhan uh, Zongnan University Hospital. Uh, they started this in February and gave every critical ill patient with COVID-19 on a ventilator. So these are the worst of the worst. Once they get on a ventilator, uh, risk of death is extremely high. So they gave them either 12,000 milligrams, that's a whole heck of a lot of vitamin C, of vitamin C twice daily, or they just gave them sterile water in the drip. Neither the patient nor the doctor knew who was getting the vitamin C or who was getting the placebo. So that's called a double blind study. The researchers didn't know and the patient didn't know. This is now considered gold standard of research design and it is. Overall, there were 26 people in the study. Five of them died, which was 19% of the patients in the vitamin C group, while 10 of the 38, which was 36% receiving the placebo died. That means vitamin C almost halved the number of people who died. Those on the vitamin C were 60% uh, more likely to survive than not. That's a pretty cool, that's a pretty cool little study. Meaning, if you want to prevent this thing, that's probably okay to take a, a you know, a normal dose or somewhat of a, a high-ish dose, not that high, but high-ish dose as a prophylactic along with vitamin D and all the things. Like this is just, common sense stuff that had they come out at the very beginning of all this and they announced, okay, you want to put your body in the best possible position, eat real food, take vitamin C, take vitamin D, do all the things, get breath of fresh air, meditate, relax, don't let the stress get you because your mental health is just as important as your physical health, da, 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 da. So we have all these things that they could have been telling us and they haven't been. And now we're seeing studies that now confirm, oh yeah, vitamin D in a high dose could be helpful with COVID-19. Oh yeah, as a treatment, vitamin C now in this new study out of China is an incredible lifesaver. We gotta wake up people, we gotta wake up. This next one's not so nice because there does seem to be uh, a lot of craziness leading up to this election. And this is certainly not a political story I'm reading from, uh, but it is a group called Shut Down DC. And Shut Down DC uh, has this guide that they have published online called Stopping the Coup. And so they fear post-election that somebody's gonna try to steal the election one side or the other. And so they're trying to prevent that from happening. But in the process of wanting to prevent that from happening, they want to disrupt America. I just need you to know about this. Like they, they want to cause problems if they feel like the election doesn't go in the way that they would like for it to go. Um, and they're demanding no winner is announced until the votes are counted uh, and that there, there will be a coordinated effort to ensure this. Now, what does that mean? Like we already see uh, or we've seen a preview with some of the Antifa stuff and, the, and some of the people representing Black Lives Matter. Not saying it is Black Lives Matter, but the people representing and having shirts and screaming Black Lives Matter out there. It's probably mostly Antifa. They have been very vocal in causing disruption and setting fires and, and all this. It Was that just a preview of what's coming post-election? Maybe. Uh, so they're going to try to prevent anyone from declaring themselves a winner. And they're going to try to force the election to be fair. 
So again, whatever that means, um, and they will do anything that they can to make sure that this election goes the way it's supposed to. Like, I'm incredibly fearful is not the word. I don't know what I am. I'm, I'm, I'm concerned sincerely about the post-election. Um, regardless of who you're for in this election, one side or the other, this ain't going to be pretty. Um, and they're almost setting it up for that to happen. Like, we won't know election night who the winner is. And we might not know a week later. We might not know, if, if those of you old enough, you might remember 2000, we didn't know until the middle of December who the winner was in the 2000 election. So it's going to be a crazy time. Now you know why I'm going away for a couple months in November and December. I don't want to be anywhere online when all that you know what's going to go down. So just be aware there are groups out there wanting to cause disruption and chaos. So they're out there. All right. And the last one, this was a funny one. A disturbing Twinkie that has so far defied science. So we've always heard this rumor that a Twinkie would basically last forever, right? So so there would be people that would buy them and then like keep them in their cupboard a couple of years and they pull them out and they'd still look fresh. Well, look what happened to someone who purchased a whole bunch of Twinkies back in 2012 when they discontinued them. They have since brought them back. But when he thought they were gone forever, he's like, oh, well, let me just buy a whole bunch of them. They last forever. That was what everybody believed. Well, look at this picture. So that was one of them and it kind of looks normal. Then this one has like a little black spot on it. And then this one just totally putrefied. And it's a very interesting thing that happened uh, to them, especially that, that last one there that this new story illuminates. These uh, Twinkies sat for eight years uh, in a basement until last week when the guy finally remembered, oh yeah, I've got Twinkies down there. And he saw that there was all kinds of fungus growing on them. So he posted it on his Twitter and he caught the attention of a couple of researchers out of West Virginia University who study fungi. And so those two guys wanted to see these, they wanted to see what in the world is growing on these uh, on these Twinkies. They had previously done research on peeps to see how fungi could survive on peeps. And apparently the sugar in it uh, and some of the preservatives and the low water content, all of those things make it very difficult for mold and fungi to grow. Um, and so the food industry, they said, has crafted the ability to make foods that have a long shelf life. Uh, and I know uh, people have also said the same thing about like a McDonald's hamburger and the French fries, that those can last a long time. Um, and there's various people, there's like a trend out there right now to have McDonald's uh, hamburger uh, and French fries and to put it away for a period of time and then you know kind of test that theory. But a lot of people think that. But West Virginia, so they do uh, take a look at this Twinkie, and the guy was more than happy to send them the Twinkie. Uh, and the reason they wanted it was that one Twinkie that was all shriveled up, they said, oh, we've seen that before. So it was very familiar to them. Uh, and they noticed that the wrapping on this mummified Twinkie, as they called it, seemed to be sucked inward. Listen to this, suggesting that the fungus got in there before the package was sealed. So in other words, somebody 12 or uh, eight years ago when it was originally purchased, had he eaten it then, that fungus was in there. Guess where that fungus goes? In the mouth and down in your gut in processed food. And it got in before the package was sealed while the fungus was consuming the Twinkie. It was probably using up more air and oxygen than it was putting out. And thus that vacuum effect. You saw it was all shriveled up and looked like it was vacuum packed. Hey, uh, and very well that vacuum may have halted the fungus's ability to continue to grow. We just have a snapshot of what we're sent, but 
who knows if the process ended five years ago and it's just now being noticed. Now you might think that one, that that shriveled up one, you might think it stunk when they opened it up. Well, guess what? It didn't smell at all. Isn't that interesting? And so, yeah, so isn't that interesting? Like, they don't last forever. If, if you've always believed that Twinkies are so full of preservatives and everything that they just last forever and they're pristine, there is an example that they don't. Now, again, they said the fungus had to have gotten in there during the manufacturing process, right? And then there's one that's got a little something, something, and then here's one of them that does look pristine. Oh, by the way, the guy bit into it, uh, one of the ones, and it, he said it tasted like a dirty sock. Like, I don't know how you know what a dirty sock tastes like, but it is kind of gross, I guess, so. So that's all of the headlines that I had for you guys. I'm gonna go to the questions that came in ahead of time and then I'm coming to you guys next. So if you've got questions for me, today is Ask Me Anything. If you just joined us, this is Ask Me Anything. No, uh, a healthy margarita, you did not miss anything yet. If you have a question for me, right now is your time. Put it down there, and when the time comes here in just a moment, I will come to you. But I did have a few questions come in ahead of time, so let's get to those first. What are your plans while you're on your second sabbatical? So it, it's funny, I have not called this time off in November and December a sabbatical per se, but I suppose it is. I guess when I did six months last year, that's a sabbatical. So I guess this little two months is a, 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 a mini sabbatical, I suppose. But um, what am I going to do? Uh, the primary thing I'm going to do is just not be on. I love being on because when I'm on, I'm on. You guys know I don't half-ass anything. I give it my all when I share here on Jimmy Rants Monday through Friday. Uh, live show every single day of the week, uh, weekday. Uh, and then I do three podcasts a week with various interviews. I post a lot of quality content on social media. I go, 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 go. And that's the stuff you visibly see. I do a lot of stuff behind the scenes, consulting other people and helping them build their brand, uh, working on new projects and, and that kind of thing. But it's, it's a lot. And I, I love, love every bit of what I get to do. So disconnecting completely. That's one thing I learned last year when I went away was I gotta learn how to disconnect. So I do on a weekly basis over the weekends, try to veg out. I usually slow down. I don't totally stop working over the weekends, but I slow down and then go, go, go all week. So I will basically stop everything when I go away. Um, I got some stuff I'm still dealing with in my personal life, so I'll probably deal with some of that stuff. I am planning on going to visit my mom and my sister. They live in Pensacola, Florida. So I'll be going uh, to visit them for an extended time, at least a week, probably two weeks, either around Thanksgiving or Christmas. My birthday is December the 27th. And so uh, this will fall within that two months that I'm away as well. Uh, I'm not sure what else I'm gonna do at this point. Um, I, I don't like to like plan lots of things when I'm going away, like like last year when I went away for the six months, I didn't really plan anything. And a lot of it was just like dealing with the childhood trauma things and, and all that. But uh, it's very easy to wear yourself out when you're trying to chill out. And so I'm not going to get sucked into that desire and need to go, 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 go when I'm supposed to be off, 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 off. Um, so yeah, nothing planned. I think I'll just let things come as they are. And of course, life happens. Life can be good, bad, ugly happen. And so just gonna recharge and be ready to come back in 2021, rip roaring, ready to go to help promote this cause even more. I, I will tell you guys, you know, with Jimmy Rants, I've been changing some of the topic stuff. Um, I don't just talk about nutritional health anymore. I've been talking about a lot of the head stuff, the emotional stuff, because I think that stuff matters and just things that interest me. So I'm, I'm thinking in 2021, I'm gonna continue that and ramp that up. Now I'm still always gonna be about keto. I'm always gonna be about fasting and cholesterol and all the things you know me for, 
but there's more to me than just those things. And so I think silencing me on those other things is a very bad idea when I have contributions to these other areas. So that's what I will also be kind of reframing my brain, getting ready to start 2021. I've got some ideas for 2021 that are really, really exciting. Can't wait to tell you about them. We're still working on them behind the scenes. Uh, but yeah, you'll see the difference when I come back in 2021. But thank you for that question. Let's go to the next one here. What mindset strategies and insights have uh uh, have let you begin dealing with your childhood trauma? Oh, man, that is a loaded question. Mindset, strategies, and insights. I think acknowledging that it's going to be a painful process of thinking about it so that you come on the other side of it a much better person. Um, and I've been doing a lot of this work for over a year now uh, and have been putting in lots of time, energy, and effort into the head stuff. And hopefully that comes out in my work now. You guys read it in my posts on social media. You hear it here on Jimmy Rants. More than anything else, I think it's easy to just avoid doing the work because you think that's going to cause you less pain. It's less pain, I suppose, in the interim, but in the long term, you're just stuck with the misery. But if you have a little bit of the pull the band-aid off effect with this where you deal with it, it's painful in the moment, and then it's done, and then you're healing. And the healing doesn't happen overnight, the healing takes time, but little by little I've come to terms with and reframed a lot of the negativity I had about my childhood trauma for a while, just ignored it, then when I started paying attention to it, it hurt to remember that, now I'm at the point where I'm on the back side of the hurt and now I'm feeling that healing take place from dealing with the childhood trauma. And see, when I first started talking about childhood trauma when I came back from my sabbatical last year in March, uh, when I came back, people were like, wow, thank you for talking about this because I have needed to deal with this, but I didn't think you were allowed to deal with this. And I'm like, Wow, so I normalized it for a lot of people and that's definitely encouraged me in my own journey. Just know you're not alone if you've dealt with some kind of a trauma or traumatic event in your life, a lot of people have. And that trauma just, just doesn't just go away on its own. I will tell you, uh, I have a life coach who is a licensed therapist and she's been wonderful to me. Um, she, I haven't had to talk to her in a little while, maybe a couple months since I've last talked to her, but she and I had many a conversations over the past year and helped me reframe a lot of the way I was viewing things. And that's been helpful as well. So get yourself a life coach who has some therapy background. If you know a therapist that's into trauma and how you can specifically, uh, specifically deal with that, keeping a positive attitude, showing gratitude for what happened, which is very difficult. Uh, I often tell some of my friends that I talk to, you know, I'm thankful I, I was beaten as a kid because I'm now the man I am because of that. Again, that's not easy to say because, and, and I'll, I don't want anybody to get the wrong idea. Oh, go beat your kids. They'll turn into international bestselling authors. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. Uh, but it could be uh, detrimental or it could motivate. And in my case, it motivated what does doing the work uh, look like? You just said reframing is part of it. In my life, it feels like having a governor on a throttle. Doing the work. I mean, doing the work just means acknowledging it happened, realizing you can't change what happened, realizing it was never, never, ever was my fault. And, and then showing love and compassion towards the abuser. When you empathize with your abuser, you're in major healing mode. Now, I've talked about this before. I have had to cut my dad out of my life because he refuses to acknowledge his role in my abuse. Even though he was heavily abused, he never dealt with his trauma. And so now denial is his way of trying to cope with his own trauma, denying what he did to me. So I'm now cutting him and have 
pretty much all year cut him out of my life. Um, and it was unfortunate that that had to happen. Literally all he would have to do is just say, look, I know I did some bad things when you were a kid and I'm sincerely sorry that that happened. I went through some stuff and I didn't really know how to be a dad to you and I'm so proud of you that you turned into the man that you have and I'm grateful that you're impacting people in a positive way in, in your work and da 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 uh, and that I truly hope that in these last days of my life that we can still have a relationship. If he did all that, like that would be, that would be the coup d'etat of healing. Unfortunately, I don't have control over that aspect of it. Only he does. And so by me cutting him out, if he cares about this relationship enough, then he would get help. Even at 70 years old, he could still go get therapy and he could still get help. And he could acknowledge the bad. Nothing wrong with acknowledging the bad. The bad, it happened. And so for me, that's out of my control. So what can I do? Part of the doing the work is cutting him out of my life and continuing to understand things and by projecting it. I think so many people feel like, oh, I'm not allowed. It's taboo in our culture to talk about childhood trauma. You're not allowed to do that. That's, that's stuff that families sweep under the rug and no, that didn't happen. But when my dad beat the hell out of me and yelled at me and basically tried to demasculate me at every corner, and oh yeah, by the way, I was still an honor roll student all through all of that abuse I went through. I was just talking to a friend yesterday. What kind of, uh, what would my achievements have been like in life had I been supported and loved and uh, nurtured and being shown what it means to be a true man when I was a teenager? Very impressionable age. What if it had flipped the script? Could I have been top 10 in my class? Would I have been able to go to a much more prestigious college? Would my life have changed radically in another direction? I don't know. Don't get me wrong. I'm not regretting where my life is, but I am saying that those choices that were not made by me directly impacted my life to this day. And it just makes you wonder, what if? I don't dwell on what if, what if because I don't think that's helpful to anybody, but it definitely is something that ponders up there. But I hope that answered your question. And the last one. Is there a difference from 24 to 36 hour fast for bettering your cholesterol? Well, number one, if you're fasting to better your cholesterol, why? What's wrong with your cholesterol? Cholesterol is not an enemy in your health. I know doctors like to look at you up, down, and in between and tell you that you need to get your cholesterol in order and da 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 da. Guys, total cholesterol is meaningless. Meaningless. I just interviewed on Wednesday's edition of the Living La Vida Low Carb Show. I interviewed Dr. Johnny Bowden. He's the author of a book called The Great Cholesterol Myth. If you missed it, the uh, Jimmy Rance bonus over on YouTube. You can also uh, listen to it, llvlc.com. But we talked about this very thing. They called for in their book an end to the standard lipid panel. Standard lipid panels, total cholesterol, LDL, HDL, triglycerides. That is a useless panel. The only good thing on that panel is your triglyceride level. And it's the truly bad fat with, uh, uh, is the triglycerides. Not LDL, not total cholesterol, the triglycerides. And so if your triglycerides are over 100, guess what? You're eating too many damn carbs. And that's where... That's where the, the rubber meets the road. You want to lower triglycerides. So will fasting help that? Yeah. Yeah, fasting will definitely help lower triglycerides if you do it over time. You could do a 24-hour fast. That's called OMAD. When you eat one meal a day, you fast for 24 hours. You eat another meal the next day, fast for 24 hours. Um, that's, a, that's something you can do. You can also fast extended fast for periods of time, like five, five to seven days. You could do that. And that would lower triglycerides as well. Let's get off of cholesterol being this thing you need to worry about. And you need to pay attention to blood sugar, fasting insulin levels, 
and inflammation levels like HSCRP, okay? Those are the things that matter, not your cholesterol, but thank you for that question. Okay, you guys, it is your turn. Ask me anything, pretty much whatever question you have for me. We have plenty of time today. Just ask away any question you have. I'm happy to answer your questions. We're gonna come over here to Instagram first, then over to Facebook, finally over to YouTube. Please be patient if you're on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, I will get to you. Don't think I'm ignoring you. I will get to you in due course, but let's come here first on Instagram. Hey guys, what's up, what's up? JimmyRance.com is the website. And uh, of course, if you like what I do here, please, please, please go and support my work, JimmyRance.com. Click on the Patreon or the PayPal and a donation of any amount would be greatly appreciated. Jax has the first question. Have you voted yet and will you vote? Uh, I have not voted yet. I am one of those traditionalists when it comes to voting. I like to vote in person. I don't know. It's just on election day. It's kind of a rite of passage as an American. Uh, my first uh, chance to vote uh, because when I went off to college, I was 17 and I turned 18 in that. Uh, uh, ba -ba -ba. I'm trying to. Oh, 1991. <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to remember. When did I turn 18? 19. 90, uh, no, 1989 was when I turned 18. So my first election wasn't until 1990. So I got to do a, a midterm election, which I thought was the coolest thing in the world. But then I got to vote in like a presidential primary in the 92 election. Um, and then uh, obviously for the, the, the main election in November that year. Um, but yeah, I've always voted in every election in person. Um, I'm trying to remember, there might have been one year that I was traveling and so I voted absentee. I think I was in Australia one year in November, right before November, so we did have to vote absentee that year. But no, I've not voted yet and yes, I will vote. In fact, my precinct, I could literally walk there uh, down this road and it's a little church over there on the corner uh, within, like I said, quarter mile away, third a mile away. It's not very far at all. Uh, could definitely vote. But yes, I will be voting. And I think every American, if you love your country, go vote on election day or vote early or vote absentee or whatever you're doing. Vote. I get so tired of all these people that say, I wish things would change in our country. Things just never seem to get better. And then I said, do you vote? No, because the things never get better. I'm like, I was a political science major in undergrad with English, a double major, and then I got a, I have a master's degree in public policy. So I know abundantly a lot of the founding documents and, and, and how the country works and why voting is important, da da da. Um, and it just baffles me how many people just don't vote. You don't vote. I don't get it. Voting is a privilege and you should take it as such. Do you know what they do in Australia? All my Aussie friends will confirm this. They're all asleep right now, probably because it's the middle of the night for them. But uh, in Australia, it is required that you vote. If you don't vote, I think they take away your driver's license for a year and it's a heavy like $10,000 penalty. Can you imagine if they did that in America? If you are of voting age, an adult uh, of voting age, and you don't vote, you don't get to drive for a year and you lose 10 grand? I think we'd be motivated to vote a little more if we did that. And I don't care who you vote for. Just vote your conscience. Vote who you think would be the best leaders uh, across the board, local races, state races, national races, but vote. And if you don't feel like you're informed enough, inform yourself. We've got this little thing, gee, I don't know, most of you are on them right now, called a smartphone, a computer, some kind of a device, and look up your local people. It's not hard in this day and age. And yet, traditionally, maybe 50, 60% of the people vote. I think it's gonna be much higher than that this year. We might be reaching 80, 90% this year. 
with all the passion that people have around this particular election, but vote. And I don't need Facebook and Instagram uh, to constantly be reminding me to go register and vote early. And like, are you guys annoyed by that too? Um, Instagram, if you're in there, hello. If you're in there, I don't need to be reminded every single day to go vote. I'm voting, I promise you. Same goes for you, Facebook. <laughs> I know it's annoying to all of us, but thank you for that, Jax. Um, a healthy margarita, my LDL was 421. My husband's triglycerides over 900. Okay, you're the one that asked the question about the lowering cholesterol with fasting. The, the main thing, uh, LDL is a tricky number because it's just an estimated number. So let's start with you. Uh, 421 is very high for an LDL. Um, I would go check to see if you have this thing called familial hypocholesterolemia. They can run a test and they can see if you, it's a genetic predisposition for having high LDL. Doesn't mean it's a death sentence. High cholesterol is not a disease, but in that context, 421 total LDL which means your total cholesterol is probably over 500 at least. I don't know what your triglycerides are. I don't know what anything else is, but 421 does indicate that you're not uh, taking care of that LDL in the proper way. You may have familiar hypercholesterolemia. You may have an absorption issue. There's all kinds of things that could be related to that. Now, as for your husband's triglycerides over 900, that's called hypertriglycerolemia. And the best thing for hypertriglyceridemia is a very low carbohydrate ketogenic diet. When you cut your carbs down to below 20 grams of total carbohydrate, uh, those triglycerides start to fall like a rock. There's no drug that will drop triglycerides quite like carbohydrate restriction. So he needs to get on that pronto. Um, and I would assume with that high of a triglyceride, he probably has high insulin, probably has high uh, inflammation markers, which you can have those run as well. Um, those aren't good. And I think you know that that's why you wanted to ask the question today. So thank you for asking it. Uh, I do have a book about cholesterol. If you want to learn more called cholesterol clarity, what the HDL is wrong with my numbers. And it explains all of this stuff and some of the things that you can do to help bring those numbers back into line. But thank you for that question. Um, Mrs. Hendricks said, I did keto last year, lost 50 pounds. Then I got gallstones and a kidney stone. Oh man, both. I just found Sally Norton and I'm thinking about doing carnivore minus the oxalates. Help, I'm nervous. Hey, what are you nervous about? Carnivore minus oxalates. I mean, you're doing carnivore, that gets rid of the oxalates. Most of the oxalates are found in plant foods. And so... If you're not eating plant foods and you're doing carnivore, uh, you're good to go. Like I, I highly recommend carnivore. So, give it a go. I mean, what are your what are your concerns about it? I don't think, uh, I don't think there's any problems with carnivore, especially as a therapeutic. Which in this case, it sounds like you're trying to prevent the gallstones and kidney stone. And Sally Norton is is amazing uh, in talking about oxalates. Um, Give carnivore a go. If you need help, I know my friend Dr. Sean Baker has a wonderful community called Meat RX. If you go Google that, look up Meat RX, and you can see there. Uh, in fact, here on Instagram, they have a a website or, or a, a page, Meat RX Official, uh, and they have all kinds of support forums that you can do. Go check them out. I think they'll help you get started on the right foot. Um, okay, thank you, Instagram. Now let me pop over here now to my Facebook page. What's up, Facebook? See what you ha you guys have on your mind today. Um, Kira says, I wonder when they will see that the isolation, masking, and lockdowns have caused a spike in suicide. Do you know any organization tracking the suicides? I'd love to flatten the fear and the suicide curve. I have talked about the suicides a lot. Um, I, I've seen a few statistics here and there, Kira. I know in Australia, uh, the death by suicide is actually greater than the death by COVID-19. They have had very few deaths in Australia as a percentage of their total population uh, from COVID-19, but they've had major suicides. And in the town of Melbourne, 
which is in the state of Victoria. I feel, guys, we think we have it bad here. That guy, the premier in uh, Victoria, in Melbourne, Australia, um, he Dan Andrews is his name. He is as evil as they come. He has those poor people locked in their houses, and they've been locked in their houses since March. One guy just yesterday uh, owns a, a tuxedo rental place or some kind of a clothing store. And he was so tired because he's like, I'm going to go bankrupt. And I put 15 years of my life into building this business. And because everything is shut down, I'm about to lose my business. So yesterday, he goes into his place of business and the police meet him there and say, you're not allowed. And he's like, this is my business. I'm going to go bankrupt if I don't reopen. And they say, well, if you stay, you will be issued a $10,000 fine and you could be thrown into jail just because he wants to survive as a small business owner. To me, that's wrong. And you're right. The isolation, the maskings, the lockdowns, the loss of income, the loss of employment. I, I mean, the ramifications of what they have done to us in 2020 will continue to be felt for many years to come. No matter who the president, no matter who the elected people are, this ain't going away. What they did to us this year is not going away anytime soon. It's not. And I'll be honest, uh, this year has been rough on my business. Uh, my book sales were way down because who cares about diet books in the midst of a global pandemic? People weren't worried about diet books. Um, and then my normal sources of income with sponsors and things on my podcast, that has all got people skittish. So yeah, it's been a tough year and that's just the reality. That's where we are. Um, I am hopeful that we can get back to some semblance of strength in the economy and and people getting employment. And so some of that suicide uh, stuff, Kira, does subside, but Right now, it's it's gloom and doom for so many people, and that's hard to overcome. Uh, but as far as statistics go, I don't know. The, the only other statistic I've seen in America is that one in four teenagers have attempted suicide this year. Now, that's a significant number, one in four teenagers, and many of them successful. I hope they give us some kind of mental health package for people that need therapy, and I hope the mental health profession is ready because they're about to get inundated with a whole lot of people. But thank you for that question. How about they tell Americans a healthy diet will cut down on the deaths? Yeah, Jeannie, that's common sense. Healthy diet and doing all the supplements and de-stressing and da-da-da. But they don't. They don't. And it makes you wonder why. It's... If it's about public health, isn't that a great public health message to put out there? Obviously. Uh, I hope this is not too personal, but I'm curious. Are you from the South? Are you from the South? Do you really have to ask somebody that talks like this if he's from the South? Yes, I, uh, I live in South Carolina. Am I from the South? I've literally never been asked if I'm from the South of the United States. Yes, I am from the Southern United States. South Carolina, I grew up, uh, I was born in Tennessee. I grew up in Pensacola, Florida, and my mom was a good country girl who grew up in Tennessee. So she taught like this, so I learned to talk like this. Uh, then I went back to, uh, in my teenage years, to live with my dad in Tennessee. I went to, uh, college in Tennessee and then moved to Virginia, which is not the South, but, uh, and I guess I did lose my accent a little bit when I lived in Virginia Beach and then uh, 20 years ago moved here to South Carolina. I've been here, for, like I said, for 20 years. So uh, yeah, Southern boy through and through. What do you do for relaxation? Well, I got a lot of little toys that I do for relaxation. Number one is just the nothingness. When I want to disconnect, I disconnect, and I think it's smart to disconnect. I'll get out in the sunshine, I'll stand in the backyard, I got my chickens all back there. So that's relaxing. I do have a hot tub I can chill out in. I do that multiple times a day. Um, I also have an infrared sauna 
that I use. I also have little massage wands that I, I all kinds of little massage wands. I have a massage chair, a vibration plate, uh, movement actually. I've got lots of area on my property here where I can move. That also is a de-stressor and relaxer. So yeah, lots of toys to do all the relaxation. Jenny says, I take electrolyte supplements to avoid the night cramps if fasting. Should I take them or stop them? It seems like they will stop the goal of getting to autophagy. Why would, why would electrolytes stop autophagy? Unless they have calories. Does your electrolyte supplement have calories? Most electrolyte supplements is just salt, potassium, and magnesium. So I don't know why that would stop autophagy. Autophagy is a calories the, the thing that would inhibit autophagy would be calories. And even, even if you did have some calories in this electrolyte supplement, it's not going to be more than 20, 25 from like a sweetener or something, I suppose. Yeah, you know, take, take your electrolytes all the more in the midst of fasting. In fact, my friends at Keto Chow make these little fasting drops, which are electrolyte drops. Uh, it's concentrated sodium and magnesium. And, and there's no calories in this whatsoever. <clears throat> Total calorie zero. But you get the sodium and potassium and no, no nothing. So that's what I would recommend to get those electrolytes in. What do you do with the chickens when you go on vacation? Are there chicken sitters out there somewhere? I will need some for mine if I go away. I have a great family friend uh, who has always watched the chickens and the cats uh, for me when I go and travel. So when I travel, she takes care of them and she knows all the routine of what to do. It's pretty simple. It's not hard to do the work. You just got to show somebody how to do it. And like I said, she's been doing it for me for many years. Uh, I've had chickens about seven or eight years now. And so every time I have a trip, uh, she'll come over and take care of the, the girls for me. So, and does a good job. But yeah, just ask somebody show them how to do it. I pay her a few dollars um, to take care of those. But yep, that's what I do. Um, would you recommend your brand of infrared sauna, says Jenny? Um, well, I got the one from Costco. There's all kinds of brands out there. I'm not married to any brand and definitely I'm not sponsored by any. Um, I know Sauna Space is a good name brand. They also have the whole EMF blocker if you want to use Sauna Space. Um, but no, I'm not married to any, any particular brand. I got the one from Costco when it was on sale, major sale. Uh, it seats three people and it was like 1200 bucks and I love it. I love it. All right. Thank you so much. Facebook. Let me pop over here now to my YouTube channel. What's up YouTube? See what you guys have to ask about. Have you ever tried a plant-based diet with green vegetables, beans, grains, and a bit of fruit and potatoes with no animal products, no oil, no sugar, and no white flour, says Music CH2897. Uh, and do you have any evidence that a high-fat meat diet, low-carb, can reverse heart disease? Uh, great questions. Um, no, I have not tried that way of eating, nor do I have any interest in that way of eating. My way of eating that I consume now is an animal-based diet that is high in fat, low in carbohydrates, and I'm quite happy with that. My uh, blood markers have all been spectacular, and with what I know about the gut irritant uh, properties of a lot of the foods that you mentioned on your list, I have no interest in messing with my gut health like that. Um, I know I would have major gas. I, would, I know I would have major hunger and irritability. The healthy fats, we do have strong, strong evidence. The healthy fats can stabilize your mood and make your brain health soar. Uh, that's why I eat the way that I eat. Uh, and the satiety, so if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Now, there could be an argument, well, you still have weight on your body. Yes, yes, I do. Um, and there are many reasons why that could be, but I don't think it has anything to do with my diet. I'm pretty much just eating animal-based foods, and I do enjoy the health benefits I'm getting from that. So hope that helps you out uh, with your questions. Where can I find a normal CT scan uh, for people who eat uh, high-fat 
and meat low carb long term? Well, mine's zero and it's been zero twice. You could go to meatrx.com. A lot of those guys post their uh, heart scan scores all the time. Just about every one of them has a zero. Um, there you go. Is it possible to raise HDL on a very low HDL on a very low fat diet? I don't think so, because the basis of a higher HDL, uh, which Dr. Dean Ornish in an interview one time, a uh, very famous vegan, Dean Ornish said, "Well, you don't need high HDL." Here's how he uh, justified that vegans tend to have lower HDL. Well, HDL is nothing more than garbage trucks for the body. So the more HDL you have, it means you've got more garbage to get rid of. And of course, he's referring to the LDL as the garbage. I disagree with that analogy. HDL being higher is a great thing. And you simply can't get your HDL higher unless you're eating saturated fat. And most of the good quality saturated fat comes from animal foods. But thank you for your questions. I really appreciate that. Um, is a life coach fairly different than a therapist, says Lauren. My history teacher in high school said, if you don't vote, don't complain. Yeah, exactly, Lauren. I had the same kind of uh, teaching. A life coach, uh, fairly different than a therapist. Yes, because you can be a life coach and not be a therapist. Okay. A life coach is not trained to be a therapist and give therapy. A lot of these therapists who become life coaches, they do the life coach thing because they're only allowed to practice therapy in the state they're in or the states that they're certified and qualified in. So thus they become a life coach. They still have the knowledge as a therapist so they can help you. Um, if I had my druthers to choose one over the other, a generic life coach versus a therapist to deal with some of the stuff I've dealt with, like the childhood trauma, I would definitely choose a therapist. But this uh, person that I use, uh, I know she's a fan of my work. So she knows abundantly who I am and what I do. Um, and and we click. Like I I understand her. She understands me. And, and we have a really great relationship in that, in those therapy sessions. So definitely try to get a therapist, but Get who you can, somebody that can help you work through all the things. But thank you for that question. All right. All right, thank you, YouTube. Let me pop back over here now to my Instagram page, see what else came in here. Um, the hints and clues of internment camps in Canada where I live are very disturbing. Yes, if you guys haven't heard about this, uh, where is it, Quebec, where they're building these little camps that when people come into the country, they send them to this camp, I guess, to quarantine for a period of time. But then they don't have to have a reason why you're at that camp. And they don't really put a limitation on how long you're there. Like, it's scary uh, what they're doing there. But yeah, thank you for pointing that out, Joshua. That's right. It's crazy, crazy stuff. Eyes wide open, guys. Eyes wide open. Joshua says maybe that electrolyte supplement has a sweetener. Well, even if it does have a sweetener, it's not going to be so much calories from the sweetener that it would knock you out of autophagy. So that's that was what she was she was saying there. All right. What does your daily routine look like? So I am an early riser. So most days I'm up somewhere between three to four o'clock in the morning because I go to bed at like seven o'clock. Last night I went to bed at 6.30 and I was up around like 2.15, 2.30. So it funky hours, I know. But I get so much done in those early morning hours. But as soon as I wake up, I basically first thing I do is just chill out in the mornings. So I'm waking up still. It takes me about a half an hour to you know fully wake up. I get into the hot tub back there when it's dark outside and the crickets are, are, are doing their thing and it's dark and sometimes the moon and the stars are up there and it's just solemn. And so I let that solemnness help to further relax me. And I start my day that way. Sometimes I'll get my phone. I'll play a little words with friends. I'll just chill out. 
um, before I do anything. Then I get out of the hot tub and, and go drip dry and just start my work and start like checking all the social media, see if any comments came in, see if there's any like crackpots that left me a weird comment over on uh, YouTube. I get a lot of those. And so uh, deal with all that. Sometimes I'll kind of catch up on the news to kind of see what happened maybe overnight. Uh, look at some clips like this week was the Supreme Court nomination. So I was doing a lot of viewing of some of that uh, footage. There was way too much to view all of it, but I saw bits and pieces of the various things there. Uh, and then I start researching uh, topics for Jimmy Rants and kind of search around. Is there any new studies that are out? So I'm always checking PubMed, looking for the studies, seeing kind of what's there. If there's anything of interest that I think I could do a Jimmy Rance episode on, I bring it to you guys. Um, and and then I post my sleep uh, from the Ura Ring results. I post that up on my stories. If I find some interesting things, depending on the day, I post my, my podcast uh, guests for that day. I'll have like a little snippet of them. I'll start working on an idea for a post or two on my main social media pages as well. Dude, the content just flows. And then I come over here around eight o'clock, I'll make my breakfast, which is usually eggs cooked in butter and grass-fed butter. Um, and then when I'm done with that, I'll wash the dishes, go and take care of the chicken stuff, come in and take care of the cat stuff, and then set everything up here for Jimmy Rance that starts at 11. Um, sometimes I'll talk to a friend somewhere in that uh, 9 to 11 period, just have conversations with them. Then when Jimmy Rance is over at noon, sometimes I have podcast interviews in that afternoon, usually around 1 or 2. Today I don't have anything, but um, I'll go when I'm done here and go and get some more sunshine. I try to get that sunshine all throughout the day. I make myself go outside uh, and do that. But I mean, I could go on and on about the routine, but it's just... I'm very structured, uh, but not so structured that I feel like, oh, if I miss something, my world falls apart. Um, I do have flexibility in that structure so that if stuff does come up, I can adjust. So that's how the day goes. But that's a great question. Teresa Harkness says, silly question. No, no silly question. Only silly question is the one you don't ask. What's your beverage of choice? You're looking at it. I remember you saying you don't drink coffee. No, coffee is disgusting. I'm a hyper taster, which means anything that I taste that might have any little bit of something is magnified. So people don't realize a lot of coffee is bitter. And so you think it's bitter like a little bit. I think it's bitter a lot of bit. Same with like very, very, very dark chocolate. I can't do above 85%. I've tried, even 85% is like pushing it. Above 85%, 90 and definitely 100, it's way too bitter for me. So I can't do that. Uh, even like broccoli, I don't like raw broccoli because it has bitter notes in it. I t it tastes like I'm chewing rubber when I'm eating broccoli. Uh, and I've always had these hyper senses, so hyper taste, hyper smell, just uh, I have very heightened senses. And so that's no bueno when it comes to coffee. So yeah, water. Um, I do like the occasional diet soda. Um, if I'm out and about and want one, I'll get one. No big deal. Um, yeah, so that's primarily what I, what I drink as far as beverage. Not a silly question. Okay, you guys, that is it for this episode of Chibi Rants. Thank you for all the Ask Me Anything questions you had today. And uh, thank you so much for being here today. Uh, yeah, so join us. We are here on Instagram, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. So come follow me right here if you want to watch Jimmy Rants, the show. We are here all the time. So thanks so much for being here. At Living Low Carb Man is how you uh, access the show. L-I-V-I-N-L-O-W-C-A-R-B-M-A-N. Once you're there, engage live. We also simulcast live over here on my Facebook channel as well as on my YouTube channel. I, I see over on YouTube, somebody is demonstrating exactly what I was talking about a little bit earlier. When you write to an influencer, you ask one question, 
and they answer. And if they say, if you have any other questions, please feel free to write me. Maybe you write one more question, but don't keep writing questions. There's one guy over there on YouTube right now who has written me, and I'm not kidding you guys, over a dozen questions. And I answered six of them on the show today. So don't be disrespectful to my time. And this is not just about me. The reason I'm talking about this is when you interact with an influencer who's nice enough to answer your questions, you don't keep asking lots of questions. Okay, go buy their books. So I've got all kind of books. If you want to learn about my philosophy, go read Keto Clarity, go read The Complete Guide to Fasting. I got all these things if you want to opine on all of my philosophy about nutritional health. So um, I see your questions. Thank you so much, but no thank you. I'm not going to keep endlessly being your personal answer guide, but thank you for playing. Have a nice day. Uh, if you missed the live, you can watch it on replay right here on IGTV. Was that rude? I, I didn't mean to be rude, but I am firm. Uh, IGTV, you can watch the replay. You can also watch it over on YouTube. Just type in a keyword, Jimmy Ranch, you will find the show. Finally, you can find the official website for this show. It is jimmyrance.com. And you can see all the past episodes there. And that's where you can also support my work. If you want to ask me 100,000 questions, support my work over at PayPal link or Patreon link over at jimmyrance.com. Okay, you guys, enjoy your weekend. Thank you so much for being here today and all week long. And we will see you again on Monday. Bye.